This is Valley News Live at 4. Here's a look at today's top four at four. A man is facing several charges after a bizarre incident in Moorhead over the weekend. Police got a call after four on Saturday saying a man pointed a gun at a moving car. The victims told police that they were pulling out of a grocery store parking lot and were forced to stop behind a car in the middle of the street. A man walked up to the victim's car and pulled a gun on them before getting into the suspect's car and speeding away. When police stopped it, the suspect pointed the gun at them and ran off. 29-year-old Jor Vance Jordan was caught and arrested. He faces up to 39 years in prison. And police in Grand Forks are looking for a man involved in a fight over a stolen car. Police say it happened at... I don't know who invented them, but I could kiss them. Thank you so much. It was like... ...parking lot and tried to block it from pulling out. The driver got out of the car and tried to fight him. The driver ran away, abandoning the car at the gas station. Police are asking everyone to keep an eye out for him. He's a white male with several tattoos with no shirt and black coveralls. And a Moorhead man charged with assault who reportedly told his girlfriend that she doesn't deserve to live is out on bond. 31-year-old Jordan Schweitzer is charged with second-degree assault after trapping his girlfriend in a room and threatening to kill her. It happened just after 2 p.m. on New Year's Eve when officers got there. The victim said Schweitzer pulled a knife on her and told her that she needed to die. If convicted, he faces up to seven years in prison. And Minnesota restaurants are getting ready for more indoor dining. Tomorrow, Governor Tim Walz is announcing changes to COVID restrictions as numbers continue to improve. Walz's office says no other details are being released at this point. The governor put a pause on indoor dining across the state on November 20th as a part of a four-week dial-back plan. He extended it on December 16th, but did allow restaurants and bars to have outdoor in-person service. And that wraps up today's Stop Forward 4. Now let's get a first look at our weather with Chief Meteorologist. Hey, Hutch. Callie, hello. We had a great start to the day and a foggy one for many of us as we got out the door today in the FM area. We had those low clouds and fog kind of lingering throughout our day as we started out in the teens. The radar shows we have some snow to contend with that's developing out to the west. So most of our area pretty snow free right now, as we talked about in the forecast last night, things are timing out pretty good. Ellendale Oaks and all the way out towards Napoleon Wishick, a chance for some flakes developing there. And this is expected to spread our way tonight. Temperatures in the 20s north and east where Bedette is at 23, 24 in Grand Forks. It's 33 degrees this hour in Jamestown. Once again, as advertised, about a 30 degree day for most. Your planner for tonight shows snow free conditions for most of the evening here in Fargo and our best chance of snow increases in the overnight hours. So you can get your running around done tonight. Grand Forks, no threat of snow, just a cloudy night and steady temperatures in the low 20s. Callie, I'll have details in an hour by hour style on the track and timing of those snowflakes. The most impacted area will be southeast North Dakota where we have shovelable snow of one to five inches expected. I'll have all that you need to know on that in a few minutes. All right, we look forward to it. Thanks, Hutch. And we've got an update for you from Sanford about the coronavirus vaccine rollout. Sanford's vice president and chief medical officer says things are going well. All shots have gone to the hospital staff and are now getting their second doses. There have been some side effects similar to other vaccines like lightheadedness, fevers, and headaches. Over 22,000 people have been vaccinated in North Dakota, but there's still a lot of misinformation. Dr. Doug Griffin wants you to know that the vaccine does not alter your DNA, cause infertility, or give you COVID-19. He says the vaccine is so safe that he's urging his own family to get it. I'm uh, eager to get my second dose today uh, and would not do it. Any of my family members, uh, even if one of my four daughters was pregnant, I would have them ask them to get the vaccine. They're all adults to make their own decision, but I have no, uh, I have no qualms about any, anybody that I know and love dearly receiving the vaccine. Dr. Griffin also says they're unsure if the vaccine will need to be taken every year. 
And you may be getting a surprise in the mailbox if you live in the city of West Fargo. A city spokesperson says every resident is getting a $25 gift card for any business in city limits. The goal is to help boost residents and businesses that are struggling during the pandemic. People are excited um, to support local businesses as well, which we're really excited about. So I think I think it's well received. The money is coming from COVID-19 CARES funding relief funds. So this isn't money that we're drawing from property taxes or sales tax or, or things like that. It's money that's been set aside to provide relief. You can also use the card for things like gas or groceries, but you can't use it on the City of West Fargo Utilities and Municipal Services. And police in northwestern Minnesota say they're seeing more counterfeit $20 bills going around. Thief River Falls police got this fake bill yesterday. It says copy money in multiple places, but at first glance it looks like the real thing. That's why police want business owners to keep an eye out when they're handling cash. Police in Polk County are also investigating a fake $20 bill given to the Ultima Bank in Faustin. This is the only report of counterfeit money in the county, but people should double check their cash to make sure. And it's runoff day in Georgia with control of the U.S. Senate hanging in the balance. A record three million people have already voted and Democrats are encouraged by their share so far. Republicans need a major in-person turnout today to hang on to their two Senate seats. Mark Strassman has the latest from Atlanta. Voters in Georgia stood in line this morning to cast ballots in the state's two Senate runoff elections. Three million people have already voted early. You can't complain if you don't vote. It's really great to have uh, a voice uh, to be heard. Well, hello, everybody. Reverend Raphael Warnock and John Ossoff are the Democrats hoping to unseat GOP incumbents Kelly Loeffler and David Perdue. Both races will determine which party controls the Senate, and the candidates are spending record money to get voters' attention. The future of the country is on the ballot here in Georgia today. I just want to humbly urge everybody to participate in this election today. Get out there and vote. Each Democratic candidate raised more than $100 million in two months, compared to more than $60 million each for the Republicans. Vote. Make sure your voice is heard. With the stakes so high, President-elect Joe Biden and President Trump held dueling rallies in Georgia on Monday. Our country is depending on you. The whole world is watching the people of Georgia tomorrow. Mr. Biden used his rally to slam the president's response to the COVID pandemic. I don't know why he still wants the job. He doesn't want to do the work. While President Trump spent most of his nearly 90 minutes on stage repeating false claims about election fraud here. There's no way we lost Georgia. There's no way. The rigged, that was a rigged election. Both races are considered close. Democrats must win both to seize control of the Senate. Mark Strassman, CBS News, Atlanta. It could be days before all the votes are counted and winners are declared. A movie company, United Van Lines, has released its 44th annual National Migration Study. It found Americans moved westward and south, and the COVID-19 pandemic factored into many of those decisions. Topping the list of locations moved away from was New Jersey, which has held the spot for the past three years. North Dakota was number seven on that list, with 57% of moves taking people away from the state. More than a quarter of Americans moved to be closer to family. Minnesota was the top destination for those movers.